Hi guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to do something slightly different and I'm going to show you some of the toys we get to play with at university. Hi guys, I'm Tom McNicholas, currently the president of UE Bass, the University of Brighton Aeronautical Society. Today we're going to show you around some of the simulators and some of what we get up to here at the university. Okay guys, so if you come with me, we're going to go into the simulation interaction development room. So I'm currently sat on the motion platform the university's got. It's got 60 degrees of movement with 50 centimetres movement either way. It's currently set up with a force feedback iris system as it's set up for flight at the minute and it can be swapped and interchanged as a car, as an aircraft or pretty much as whatever we want it to simulate. It used to be set up as P3D, formerly flight simulator but now we've moved on to X-Plane for some of the more realistic flight characteristics that we can get that actually simulate aircraft and as I'll show you later that's handy when we come to building our own aircraft on the computer system. So part of most of the stuff we've got at university is used and constantly developed. As on this we're currently planning to mount three screens actually onto the motion platform itself and um, like I say it's currently set up as a aircraft and we use the Oculus Rift for that which is fantastic because you actually feel like you're in a real cockpit when you move around and you can actually feel like you can touch things. From a pilot's point of view, this is fantastic from gauging your motion relative to the ground, especially in forced landing situations. Not necessarily perfect training because it's not the real thing, but it, you get to do some things that you can't do in real aircraft and you get to fly aircraft and you don't get to fly anywhere else, so yeah. So I'm going to introduce you to Stuart here. Hi guys. And we're going to go into the other room and show you the other flight simulator we've got here at the university. Hi, I'm Stuart. Currently the web officer here at UBAS and as you can see behind me we have yet another flight simulator. Uh, this particular flight simulator actually features a real aeroplane cockpit. This particular aeroplane was a Sakata TB9 that once crashed in France. Now if we head over here, as you will be able to see, that we have actual aeroplane controls and every button that you see in there will actually do what it says it's supposed to do. And as well as the aeroplane cockpit which is real and I don't know how you could get more real than that, you also see a very nice panoramic view around it as well. It's a bit different to the VR headset and it's certainly a lot different in terms of, and it certainly is quite another world compared to the motion platform and the VR next door. From a training point of view, this particular simulator I think is better in a way because unlike the VR and the motion platform, while you can't feel the plane and feel as if you sit in the actual flying cockpit, this one does allow you to have better better interactions with your controls and your instruments. So everything you see in here will actually do the function it's supposed to do. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, what, about, we, you know, what about, we're doing in here, Tom, yeah. yeah. yeah about <laughs> one, two, one, two, Cinderella. Yeah, well, it's still running, is it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, okay. Just, um... So, yeah, my name's Dave in Sid here in Cockroft Building of University of Brighton. Uh, this is the kind of room I've been setting up as development for uh, simulation and as getting as close as we possibly can to the real thing. Hence, going over to X-Plane for planes as opposed to Prepare 3D. It uses a different kind of flight dynamic. So I've been trying to build planes in Plane Maker and failing miserably at first and flying very badly and then eventually being able to fly things that you know, go fairly well. So as you can see, it's quite a complicated looking bit of software, but it does enable us to use airfoils and study the dynamics of particular planes. Um, and soon, you know, once you've started building the basic plane, you can then have it on the six degrees of motion platform and see how it flies. It's good. It's a good way of actually demonstrating how to build a plane and fly it. So yeah, I kind of started here over in engineering about five years ago. Um, I came from an arts and music background uh, and got interested in getting virtual reality involved uh, in its very early stages and movement, prim primarily six degrees of motion. So we can have the slew and the yaw and also in automotive we can have the back end going out when people are sliding cars, etc. Changing tyre pressures, you can feel the differences. So that's been my main drive, as it like, to get it as close as we possibly can to reality without actually going onto racetracks and in the air. Um, so this is University of Brighton Aeronautical Society. So what we do here every Wednesday, we try to get people involved to like get to design a plane, make a plane and fly a plane at the end of the day. With the facilities we have in the university, so we've got like a laser cutter, so when you come in, the plans for each of those planes have been laser cut for you. So all you do is you come in, get yourself a, a workbench, sit down, you get their parts that will be provided to you, to electronics, including electronics, um, radio control, the motors, ESC, everything you need to basically get started. So you make progress every week as you come, and then let's say by the end of the month, if you're fast enough, you get to fly indoors. Um, if you're really fast, you could get a beat in a day if you want to. So you're not like limited to how fast you can go or whatever. This is one of the models I'm currently working on. You can literally go, go out, like basically go out your way to design something for yourself and then come to university and we're going to help you cut it out for you and you could then get your own electronics and make it more advanced and more, go more faster as well. So that's obviously as you progress along the, um, the society. So currently right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the servers, you can see where I've marked some areas there, I'm trying to get some servers in. This society would then, the main aim is obviously to get you to that level. So when you're obviously going to start designing your own aircraft. Guys, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, do all the usual stuff. Um, comment, let me know how you thought it went. Um, let me know what you'd like to see on the channel in the future. And I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.